Hey everyone, it's your Almighty Wolf here, back again with a, another video, and today I'm going to be doing my Phase 4 tier list ranking video uh, of how I rank these MCU Phase 4 projects, all 13 projects in a span of a year, which is pretty damn impressive. And I wanted to do this video for you guys today since, um, since Comic-Con Hall H is coming out is coming out this week a panel for hall age one of the most biggest panels yet is coming this week they're actually having two separate panels one for the animation side and one for the live action side uh which is the main one uh coming on 23rd the, the animation one is coming out on the 22nd i wanted to do this video of how i rank these phase four projects so far all 13 of these phase four projects so far uh, so I'm very excited to do this video guys, so let's get this started. So first up we got Black uh, Black Widow and this movie is all right. It is an average film uh, and Honestly, it's really not that great. Uh, I mean really the CGI is lacking the villain had so much potential taskmaster which is the villain of the movie had so much potential but ended up really just not being a great villain and it wasn't the tony masters taskmaster it was a completely different taskmaster and i really didn't like that and this movie at times was it was way too goofy and specifically there was this one scene in the movie where where was it was a, such a stupid scene uh, I didn't even understand why it was implemented there, but it was really, it was really, really dumb, and I didn't, I didn't even like that it was implemented in this movie. Um, what else? I, it just, in really, it's a movie that should have been released a long time ago. If it was released a long time ago, it would have been really amazing. But I didn't like the fact that we we got, or I didn't like the fact that right now we got a um a black middle movie i mean really i i mean i like the fact that you know it's setting up the future of elena belova and i like the fact that we did get the chance to meet her her family but i mean it this movie should have been released a long time ago and it would have been way better back back in the day if it was released a long time ago and it just it's just an average movie guys it's honestly it's honestly not that great. I mean, honestly, I thought this movie was really good because uh, it was the first movie I saw in theaters after really a long time. It, the last movie I saw in theaters before I saw Black Widow was Rise of the, Rise of the Skywalker, and then after that, I didn't even see any more movies in the theaters after after that until I until I saw this one, and it was really such a great experience for me to finally be able to watch this movie in in cinemas but honestly it's just an average film it's not really all that great um and that's really about it uh but you know i, I respect the fact that you know it sets up the future uh for yelena bovova and the fact that she was in the hawkeye show and speaking of the hawkeye show hawkeye is a b ranking for me it's a very solid show i really love really 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 uh love the fact that the show introduced us more to the fact that more than it more than that it was a uh action adventure show but also the fact that this is a christmas action adventure so with action adventure uh superhero show which was really really damn cool which really, it was basically, in a way, uh, MCU's version of uh, Die Hard. Die Hard, MCU's version of Die Hard, which was really, really, which is really, really damn cool. And I really, really liked that. Um, I really, really enjoyed Hawkeye. I think Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop is amazing. She brings out an incredible performance. And I can't wait to see more of her in future MCU projects um what else uh echo i think like alakwa cox does an amazing job as echo and i know she's getting her own series next year uh that i'm really looking forward to seeing and um i'm looking forward to seeing more of her character on uh, in her own show 
Um, so yeah, um, and of course we got the big reveal, the one that we are all excited for after seeing episode five. Um, Vincent D'Ofrio's Kingpin. It was so amazing to finally see Kingpin after three years since you know after the cancellation of the Netflix, uh, the Netflix shows. It was so amazing to finally see Kingpin back and now he's officially in Hawkeye and it was it was just it was awesome it was so awesome to finally see him in this role and he, he's once again amazing and he really delivers such an awesome performance and he's really damn amazing as Kingpin I mean he's always been amazing I mean honestly he is the Kingpin guys he is the Kingpin no one it's just as it's just the same as you know RDJ as uh, Tony Stark. Like I said, like I said before, it's the same as RDJ as Tony Stark, uh, or or who else, or to or Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. No one can replace. No one can replace him. No one can replace those characters. Those no one can replace those actors because what those actors bring is absolutely incredible and Vincent D'Afrio brings out an incredible performance once again as Kingpin. Um, you know, like I said, I really enjoyed Hawkeye. It is a really great show and I like the fact that Elena Belova uh it is in this show and then by the you know, as you saw in the Black Widow post credit scene, there was a tease that uh that uh Elena Belova was gonna hunt um is gonna hunt down uh Hawkeye and is gonna hunt down Hawkeye and uh what was I gonna say? Elena Blow is gonna hunt down uh Hawkeye because she thinks that he murdered Natasha when in fact he didn't and they have a big fight scene and they and Elena Blow thinks it's not really worth it. So yeah, um we get that in this show and I enjoyed Hawkeye. That's all I really gotta say and I think it's a very solid show, so yeah. Next up, we got Shang-Chi. Man, was this movie goaded. This is easily a, one of the best, I'd say top three of the Phase 4 movies. Uh, and probably, I'd say for me, top three Phase 4 movies and top five Phase 4 projects. This movie was incredible. It is, incre it is an incredible incredible movie that has incredible fight choreography that took me back to you know the days of Jackie Chan and Jet Li and Donnie Yen um it really took me back to those days and it's now implemented you know in this movie and the fight choreography is the best I've seen in any fight in any MCU film today it's really that incredible the score of the movie is absolutely beautiful and just thinking about it i really want to listen to that score because it's absolutely incredible uh and really really beautiful and of course in the movie we have simu lu as shang chi and he delivers such an amazing performance he is born to play this role he's amazing and i can't wait to see more of him in the mcu and of course with shang chi 2 and 3 uh for that matter uh so yeah um what's another thing oh yeah um what's another thing i was gonna say uh tony leong is as the tony leong is the mandarin he's amazing he's a top three mcu face he's a top three i'd say phase four mcu film and he delivers this performance he's amazing and he's just absolutely awesome shang chi in the legend of the ten rings is just such an awesome movie I love this movie, and it is a top five Phase 4 project, and it's really that incredible. Uh, and it is really, really such an awesome movie, and I can't wait to see more of Shang-Chi in the future. So yeah, S-tier, Shang-Chi, and Legend of Ten Rings. Next up, we got What If. Um, you know, I'm going to put it for on the B thing B list. It's honestly not my favorite MCU project. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was, and I like the fact that uh, it was more than just uh, different scenes of alternate. It was different. It was all. It was. I like the fact that the show was more than than just having these alternate, you know, alternate 
characters and ultimate ultimate things that happen to these characters it was kind of leading to something really big and it at in at the end it gave us the guardians of the multiverse and the the it gave us the guardians of the multiverse and you know the characters from the multiverse all together to stop Ultron or well Ultron slash Vision who's in that Ultron bodysuit which was really damn cool and I really really enjoyed that um so I really enjoyed what if I mean it's not my favorite um it's definitely not my favorite but I enjoyed it for what it was and I gotta give props to it next up we have Thor Love and Thunder now this now this is a very solid fun film but in my opinion, it doesn't beat uh, Thor Ragnarok because that movie, in my opinion, is undefeated. Um, I th- I really really love I really 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 like this movie, but I didn't love it as much as Ragnarok. Uh, in my in my opinion, Thor Ragnarok had a way better story than this. Even though I really liked the story, I didn't love it. At, I didn't love it as much as Ragnarok, and I think Ragnarok had a way better story. But in this, it's I really enjoyed the humor. I really enjoyed Christopher, uh, Chris, well, not Christopher, Christian Bale's performance as Gore the God Butcher. I think he did such an incredible job as Gore the God Butcher, and he's top, in my opinion, top three Phase Four villains yet. Um, and what else did I really enjoy? And I also really enjoyed that Natalie. I really also really enjoyed Natalie Portman's Mighty Thor. I think she delivered such a great performance as that as that character, and she's really she was really really awesome in the movie. Now, the movie does have issues, of course, with the pacing. I think the pacing was very weird. Uh, even though it's you know like this movie is a two hour is a almost a two hour movie. I think this movie should have been a little bit longer. And the movie also didn't really provide a, a lot of character development within, you know, in my opinion, Gore and Mighty Thor. I think the the character development in this movie was also very lacking. But I enjoyed Thor Love and Thunder. I think it's a really well-made movie. I just didn't love it as much as Ragnarok, um, for the for that matter. Uh, but I enjoyed the humor. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the action. I enjoyed the visuals, uh, and I enjoyed some of the characters. Even if even if they didn't have a big character development, I enjoyed the characters, and I enjoyed, um, and I enjoyed. What else did I enjoy? Yeah, I guess I enjoyed the characters and the things that happened, and some of the things that were happening in this movie. So, yeah. Um, then next up we have Moon Knight. This is an S tier show. Oscar Isaac delivers an incredible performance as Moon Knight. I mean, his performance in this show was absolutely incredible. I mean, he he was absolutely incredible and delivers such an incredible performance as uh, as Mark Spector and even the identities that go within Mark Spector. He delivers one of the best performances yet. Um, what else? Uh, I mean. Uh, what I also loved about this show is that the fact that this show is also very it's also standalone. It's a standalone show and it doesn't even mention a lot of it. It doesn't have any MCU reference, which is really 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 interesting and I was very happy they made a show that was just only really consisted of a Moon Knight story and that's really all it was. It was a Moon Knight story and it didn't it didn't and it didn't let the audience dis- get distracted by anything you know, by the MCU moments. It was its own show. It was standalone. It was perfect and exactly what it was made to be. Arthur Harrow, in my opinion, I think uh, he's a really good villain. He's definitely he's definitely not amazing, in my opinion, but I'd say he's the best in terms of the Disney plus Marvel... in terms of the Disney plus Marvel uh, villains we've gotten. So, yeah, I really enjoyed his villain. And I just enjoy. I really, really enjoyed and loved Moon Knight. I think it's such an awesome, amazing show from start to finish. Uh, it keeps you on your edge of the seat, uh, and I just enjoyed everything that went that uh, that uh, Moon Knight has to offer. I enjoyed everything about it, and Oscar Isaac delivers such an incredible performance, and he is really amazing. So, yeah. Next up, we have the Eternals. This movie, uh, 
I enjoy I enjoyed some of the things, but there were other things that I just think could have been way better implemented. First up, first up, I I gotta say, man, I just I think that. Well, what was I gonna say? I think this movie takes its. I think this movie takes itself way too. At times, it doesn't take itself seriously. That's the thing. It doesn't take itself seriously. It's every, all, all this movie really is. It's funny moments and product placements and really so many like references references outside really the MCU. I, I just it was this I was when I was watching this movie, I was wondering to myself Am I supposed to take this movie seriously? Because nothing is really happening. Everyone is really joking and having a good time. And that's not what this whole point of this movie is. It's it's supposed to be a big action blockbuster. And it's supposed to give you that seriousness. I mean, you can add some humor in there. But this movie just added too, just had too much humor to this. And I, I didn't really like that. Uh, and I also think the villain had... Also, the villain of the movie was nothing even that special. Uh, it wasn't the villain of the movie was nothing all that great uh, He only lasted a freaking about a second and that's really about it But I just it's just it's just a disappointing project to me um, and I just I didn't I just think it's I Mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is it. I don't know It's a tie between which is I'd say the weakest MCU project Black Widow or this but this is definitely one of the weakest MCU projects. I wouldn't say it's the worst, but it's definitely the weakest. And I think this movie could have potential to be better, and it should have been better. Um, and I was kind of this. I was quite disappointed with this movie. So, yeah. Next up, we got Wandavision. I and I really enjoyed Wandavision. I really like this show, but it's definitely not the best for me. It's definitely not my favorite show but i really enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it and i was just watching soup's video and he said that the one division era was undefeated and i totally agree with him because i mean it this was the first mcu project we have seen in really a long time the last mcu project we have seen uh before one division was um spider-man far from home and it was a lot it was a very long time since uh, it was during that time, that two year, two and a half, two year period. Um, we were, we, you know, how do I say this properly? Uh, it, we, we were waiting for a very long time, and then we finally got this, and we finally uh, were very excited to finally see Wandavision, and the things that were going to happen in, in this in this series, for that matter. Um, and that WandaVision era was really undefeated, you know, I really, the amount of surprises we were getting, the amount of speculation, the amount of things that were happening in this show, uh, it was really undefeated, and I really, really, really liked that. Um, and the post credit scenes, for the matter of teasing for, you know, the Marvels, and the fact that Marie, uh, Monica Rambeau now has these powers, and we finally made a scroll that teases for the Marvels, and of course, Dr. Sh Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, where her kids were trapped, uh, and it was very, it was a very, it was a time to be alive. It was a time to really, truly be alive. And the WandaVision era was really undefeated, and it, it was really such an incredible, it was, it was an incredible time to be, a, to finally be an MCU fan once again. At once that, once the show came out, it was really 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 awesome and i was very happy to see that so yeah next up we got miss marvel uh this is a solid show from start to finish and i loved everything that this show really represents the pakistani uh, representation and the muslim representation were absolutely beautiful iman villani's performance is absolutely incredible as as uh iman villani's performance as um Miss Marvel is absolutely incredible, and she's born to play this role, and she's really, really amazing as, as, this character, and she's really, really just awesome. Now the movie. Now I keep saying the movie, but now the show does have a very lackluster villain. 
Um, and I think the movie, and I think, honestly, Disney Plus, in terms of Disney Plus and I mean Marvel, needs to really improve on their Disney Plus films because the only one that's really up to par, or shall I say, the only one that's the best is really Arthur Har- Arthur Harrow, and that's really really bad it. Uh, but I've just enjoyed the show so far. I think it's visually beautiful. The music's beautiful. The representation is beautiful. And it's a really a beautiful show to just look at. And I really enjoyed it. And I think it's a very solid show. And I really, really enjoyed um, Miss Marvel. So, yeah. Next up, we got Spider-Man No Way Home. The king of Phase 4. This is the king of Phase 4 movies and easily the best Phase 4 movie today and the best Phase 4 project yet. This movie was a cinematic event. It was a cinematic masterpiece. I mean, it still is a cinematic event and it still is a cinematic masterpiece. And the amount of speculation, the fan theories, the the hype surrounding this movie was huge. It was huge. And it was one of the biggest, biggest, really one of the biggest movies of all time. And it still is the biggest movie of all time. I mean, this was the movie that brought people back to the cinema. And it almost made $2 billion at the box office. And it's the highest, literally the highest grossing domestic movie domestically at the box office. The mo- It was the highest grossing domestic box office yet it really is was a time to really be alive and no way home the hype the speculation was incredible and when we finally got to watch this movie oh boy oh boy was it magical finally seeing charlie cox's matt murdoch once again after three years coming back into this role was incredible seeing the five iconic villains coming back was incredible and of course the moment we were all waiting for toby and andrew to finally appear in this movie and they fucking finally did and oh boy oh boy was that a cinematic moment and easily one of the best superhero moments not only not well not only was it the best mcu moment but also the best superhero moment yet and that scene alone when when you saw them all do when you see them do the superhero stance on the on the on the liberty uh hat uh when you see them all together uh in the liberty just the liberty belt uh it it was so incredible fighting all these iconic villains it was an absolute cinematic event and it was incredible and I also I will also never forget the post credit scene where we finally got to see Tom Hardy as Venom. It was truly truly incredible and really really just so awesome to really finally see. And I was very happy about that. I mean, guys, this movie is incredible, and I loved I love No Way Home. I mean, we all love No Way Home. It is it is one of the best MCU projects, and it's incredible. I love no way home to this day and it's not only the best for me the best phase four project but also easily the best mcu movie for me and one of the best super easily i'd say a top five top 10 to top five uh superhero projects this movie is absolutely incredible and one of the greatest movie experiences of my life going to see this movie with my best friend uh was absolutely magical and it was absolutely just it was it was really such an incredible moment that i will never forget it was a cinematic event for the ages so spider-man no way home is an s-tier movie and it's one of the best i've ever seen and with that being said there's also the s tier show and one of the best disney plus shows i've seen yet loki this show was incredible it was incredible and the loki loki era was absolutely just like with the one division just how soups was saying with the one division era being undefeated the loki 
era was undefeated. I mean, the time traveling, the multiverse, seeing the variants of Loki, um, and just the hype surrounding the hype surrounding the episodes was crazy. It was amazing and just absolutely freaking awesome. Loki is one of the best Disney Plus shows I've seen yet, and I can't wait to see what season two is going to be like. Because from the Sith photos we've gotten, uh, it looks incredible, and I can't wait to really truly see this the second season on Disney Plus when it when it comes out next year. Um, but Loki is one of the best shows I've seen on Disney Plus, uh, specific, specifically from our one of the best Marvel Disney Plus shows I've seen so far. It is absolutely incredible from start to finish, and I absolutely loved it. And I remember the, the moment when we saw He Who Remains played by Jonathan Majors, who's going to be playing Kang, in, who's going to be playing Kang, the Conqueror, in, um, in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum Medium, which I am really excited to see. So yeah, Loki is Loki era was undefeated and still is undefeated, and it really was such an incredible moment, and I absolutely, absolutely loved it. So S tier Loki. Then next up we got Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This movie was amazing from start to finish. Sam Raimi directing this movie really took me back to the old days of Sam Raimi with, you know, Spider-Man and Evil Dead. And this movie really feels like Evil Dead if it was an MCU movie. If you had all the Evil Dead movies, combine that into this movie, you get basically MCU's version of Evil Dead. And I loved it. And it really felt like an early 2000s movie, which I absolutely loved. That... And this, you know, the fact that this movie is directed by Sam Raimi really gave me that, gave me that early two thousands nostalgia. Even though I was not, even though I didn't grow up in the early two thousands, but you know, it gave me that nostalgia of what I loved about the Spider Man movies into this, what I loved about the Spider Man movies, and what I loved about the Evil Dead movies into this, and it was really truly incredible. And it was also just incredible to really see this movie in theaters, and see. The cameos, of course, the cameos, of course, with the fact that Bruce Campbell uh, and, um, and of course, the Illuminati, the Illuminati was unforgettable. The Illuminati scene is really top tier MCU moments yet. When we finally got to see John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, one of the most biggest fan castings come to life. And we were finally able to see him as Mr. Fantastic was truly a dream come true and an incredible, incredible moment to really finally see on the big screen. Captain Carter, um, finally seeing Haley Atwell as Captain Carter in live action was incredible. Um, Marie Rambeau as Captain Marvel was truly awesome. Um, what else? Mordor. Uh, Black Bolt, and they finally got the actor who was in the Inhuman show, which, as you know, was, it's, it's really, it's, from what we all know, it's pretty bad, but it was good that Kevin finally got, Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige finally got the actor to come back and play Black Bolt again, it was really, really cool, and really see him in the iconic outfit, which was really just absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, and also seeing the goat himself, Charles Xavier. Oh my God, was that incredible. Uh, I mean, this movie was really, truly an incredible experience. And also seeing Hela played by Charlie's Pharaoh, And I can't wait to see more of her in Doctor Strange 3. This movie was really such an awesome film. Uh, and I really just loved every moment of it. So Doctor Strange is on my a tier uh and i really really enjoyed this movie and then next up the last one we have falcon and winter soldier now i would place falcon and winter soldier i'd say on the a tier i love falcon and winter soldier i love this show i loved everything about it uh for before really i'd say loki came out this was really one of my favorite shows i'd say before loki came out this was my favorite show and i loved just the fact that this was a show that really shows 
you know, the events after Endgame that whether how really Sam Wilson is doubting himself and he doesn't believe that he's worthy of this shield and that he doesn't believe that he can be Captain America. So he gives it to really another person, John Walker, which we later know in the show, he he becomes this kind of he changes with the shield and he becomes a different person after killing that killing that person and becoming kind of kind of insane and losing that shield to Bucky and now Bucky has the shield of course uh and it was really such an incredible moment to really see him build his character and become Captain America by the end of the show which was absolutely absolutely incredible and the final battle was awesome it was so awesome and it was amazing to see him in that captain america suit and i can't wait to see him as captain america in captain america 4 which is going to be really really incredible um but yeah i loved i loved that and i love the fact that this show also introduced introduced or teased us the fact the teased us with the fact that that how do i say this correctly oh yeah that john walker becomes u.s agent at the end of the show which was really damn cool and really really damn impressive i was so happy to really see that um and i really just i i really 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 love falcon and winter soldier it really at that time it was really one of my favorite shows um and i just enjoyed every moment of it right now i would probably say i rank it probably number i probably rank it top five i'd say i'd say number four i would say no i lie it's it's definitely it's definitely a top it's definitely yeah it's a, it's i'd say it's a it's a top th- it's a definitely a top three show for me um but i really love falcon and winter soldier and i can't wait to see um you know more bucky and more on um, what he's capable of uh, not bucky more of um of sam and what he's capable of as captain america because sam wilson is captain america and i can't wait to see more of him so yes guys i hope you enjoyed this video this video is so fun to do and i can't wait for you guys i can't wait for you guys to uh watch Marvel Studios Hall H, which is this week, and I can't wait for Hall H. It's gonna be a magical, it's gonna be incredible, and something really damn special, and I, I'm really looking forward to that. So, hopefully you guys enjoy the video, and take care.